Poland has stated that it plans to buy as many as 96 AH-64E Apache attack helicopters. This would make the Polish land forces the second largest AH-64 operator worldwide behind the US Army. The AH-64E beat out Bell's AH-1Z Viper for Poland's long-running Kruk, meaning Raven, attack helicopter tender. Polish Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of National Defense Mariusz Blaszczyk was the first to make the announcement about the Apache deal via a post on Twitter. Another good news, we sent an inquiry to the USA regarding the acquisition of 96 AH-64E Apache helicopters in the latest Guardian version for the needs of the aviation of the land forces. Along with helicopters, we will also obtain technology transfer. A subsequent press release from Boeing said, Boeing has honored the government of Poland has selected the AH-64E Apache for the Polish Armed Forces new attack helicopter fleet. An Apache selection strengthens U.S.-Polish military ties by enhancing interoperability and cooperation between Poland, the U.S. Army, and NATO nations. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why Poland's decision to buy Boeing AH-64E Apache attack helicopters is a huge capability enhancement. Let's get into the details. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air, and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder has been kind enough to offer all Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. The Polish Army Aviation has been flying the Mi-24 DV Hins, some of which were deployed in Iraq and Afghanistan. These helicopters have undergone upgrades to become night vision goggle compatible to make them viable until a replacement is fielded. It has around 30 of these Cold War era helicopters. In 2016, the Polish government launched the Kruk program that would procure the replacement and it also sought to provide significant opportunities for local industry. However, so far the program has been slow moving. Since the number of Apaches to be bought exceeds the Mi-24 DV Hins by 66, it's likely that they'll also replace some of the other armed helicopters, like the Mi-2 and W-3, which are currently in service. The deal could be around $12.5 billion, given the fact that Australia's recent plan to buy 29 AH-64E is expected to cost around $3.8 billion. The Boeing AH-64 Apache is an American twin turboshaft attack helicopter with a tailwheel type landing gear arrangement and a tandem cockpit for a crew of two. It features a nose-mounted sensor suite for target acquisition and night vision systems. The AH-64 has significant systems redundancy to improve combat survivability. The AH-64 is adaptable to numerous different roles within its context as Close Combat Attack CCA. In addition to the 30mm M230E1 chain gun, the Apache carries a range of external stores and weapons on its stub-wing pylons, typically a mixture of AGM-114 Hellfire anti-tank missiles and Hydra-70 general-purpose unguided 70mm 2.75-inch rockets. An 18-aircraft Apache battalion can carry 288 Hellfire missiles, each capable of destroying a tank. Since its introduction in 1986, many variants of the platform have been developed.
Apache Guardian is the formal name of the AH-64E variant. Adam Hodges, Capture Team Lead for Vertical Lift International Sales at Boeing Defense, Space and Security, had told reporters at MSPO, according to Breaking Defense, Boeing's offer to Poland was for AH-64E V6 with MUM-T manned unmanned teaming capability. However, the level of interoperability will be detailed on the base of government-to-government -government talks and will depend on customer requirements and U.S. government. It has improved digital connectivity, the Joint Tactical Information Distribution System, more powerful T-700 GE 701D engines with upgraded face gear transmission to handle more power, capability to control unmanned aerial vehicles UAV, full IFR capability and improved landing gear. New composite rotor blades, which completed testing in 2004, increase cruise speed, climb rate and payload capability. The V6 sub-variant of the AH-64E is one of, if not the most, modern configuration of the Apache. It includes many upgrades that include more sensors, as well as communication systems and data links, which improve their ability to spot and engage targets. Its effectiveness during overwater operations is especially augmented. It's evident that Poland wants to increase military spending in light of the recent conflict with Ukraine. Poland forms one portion of NATO's eastern flank. The country is strategically located, sharing long borders with Belarus and Ukraine. As the Russia-Ukraine conflict rages on, Poland has become a staging ground for foreign arms and other military supplies heading into Ukraine. Poland itself has provided various weapons like tanks and howitzers. It's not hard to see that the country wants to ramp up its defenses. Just this year, the government in Poland announced plans to purchase 48 FA-50 light combat jets and 182 K-2 tanks, among other things, from South Korea, as well as 250 M1A2 SEP V3 Abrams tanks from the United States. It's also given major procurement orders in recent years which include 32 F-35 Joint Strike Fighters. AH-64E V6 is an excellent platform, and when available in decent numbers like Poland is planning to have, the fleet could go a long way in protecting its borders. It will be particularly very useful in repelling any armored thrust. Subscribe for more videos like this, hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.